I sold? I will admit, you were already on thin ice when you tried to do unspeakable things to someone who looks all of five years old. But now, I hate to say it, you dropped insanely down to the most hated character in my Seven Deadly Sins character list because you decided to harm Nasians. Now excuse me, why would you? Thank you to our $5 patron, Sin is Lancelot. And a big thank you to our $25 patron, The Mr. Greed. Now, before we have this review of chapter 54 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, please do me a favor, leave your own thoughts on the chapter in the comment section down below, leave a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as $1 a month. Any support would be greatly appreciated. Before we happen to the video itself, let's see the results of last week's poll. So last time I asked you guys about who you thought was the best of the three new characters that we witnessed on this fine chapter 53. And we found out that Ayasol took the top spot by a wide margin, actually. She took 50% of the votes. Apparently, everyone's rocking with tall women. Shout outs to y'all. Y'all got good taste. Number two came with Kion. He was my personal fave, but I can definitely see why he wouldn't be number one and why he did get the second spot because he did bring the most interest. And unfortunately, Jade, I'm sorry. Sorry, my boy, you got lacking on a nice 23%, way behind everyone else in your little group, but you probably got more in the future planning for you. I wouldn't be shocked. At least I got some people liking you, though. However, make sure you vote on the next poll that's going to drop tomorrow at 12 p.m. to get your opinion in next week's video. You know, your vote can change everything. Now, let's get into it. What's up, guys? I'm Gopan Sawyer, and here we are to chapter 54 of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, which is known as Trickery, aka, nah, like, actually, actually, <laughs> Kion, I'm, I'm rocking with you, dog. I really am. I insanely, so, like, you're that dude. You're undeniably that dude. But, like, I do kind of want to rip your throat out. But, like, nah, I just want to rip your throat Let's hop right into it. I So, we open up. We get to see that things are swanging and banging and clanging. And essentially, Percy is doing pretty darn well against Isol. And to be fair, <laughs> shoutouts to all the Percy reps in the comment section of last week's review. Because all of you were like, nah, Percy's literally gonna curb stomp this group. Like there's no there's no way on earth that Percy, I've slayed like five holy knights, he doesn't have a last name, isn't going to absolutely annihilate all these fodder. And to be fair. You guys, you guys are kind of on the money because notably Percy is swinging right on even with this, with I sold. And like, it's pretty darn good to the point where I sold has to resort to slamming against the ground, mainly because Percy dodges, but then she leaves, th she leaves these like magical residue. And notably, I, I love how Percy's battle sense is increasing. And I know that's a weird thing to say, but like. A beginning of series Percy would not have recognized the fact that the ground sucked up the magic and he wouldn't be paying attention to stuff like that. He'd mainly be focused on I sold her weapon and stuff like that. Like he wouldn't he wouldn't essentially be so battle ready and on guard. Like notably, the man is focusing purely on this and reacting straight to battle. And I think that's really, really cool. It's a good development that's subtle. I like that. You have to infer that based on what we've seen so far and what we've seen Percy go through. And of course, we get to see that Percy is like, wait a minute, <clears throat> not only are my vocal cords seemingly not functioning right now, but I'm actually short of breath. And I like how, once again, Percy's upbringing actually helps him survive in this scenario. Because, uh, minor fact that, well, not minor, it's very major, it's the entire reason Percy's the way he is, but he was raised on Finger of God, something that was literally above the clouds. So he has adapted to staying in high climates, which may explain why Percy is a lot better on like regular ground at first like just fresh off god's finger like i just thought percy was insanely strong one because he's a knight of prophecy but it also made just because he lived in very extreme conditions like i don't think humans could survive that well <laughs> if we lived above the clouds but who knows maybe if we were born there and grew up there we would come out a whole lot stronger and that's why percy's able to essentially ignore the fact that he's not able to breathe so well because of his heritage i think that's Pretty darn cool. It's a good way to tie that back in, especially considering that part of the narrative is mainly just used for like mystery buildup. It's not necessarily put on forth to a lot of combat scenarios. And of course, Percy is still just weaving. And I think that goes to show how Percy really doesn't want to fight these people. Like if he was a Knight of Arthur at this point, he would have swung back. But no, no, he's literally just defending himself. So why, why are you, why are you attacking? Like, I get it. You saw the coffin of eternal darkness, but nothing, like, nothing else applies. It still doesn't make sense to me, right? Like, I get Kion being evil. 
because he he just looks evil. Like I hate to say it, you see some characters and you're just like, yeah, they're probably not the best of people. Like no offense to you, Kion, but I'm pretty sure even you know yourself, you're not a good person. So I get why he's on that menace mentality, saying I'm gonna kill you. But I sold. I like. See, I'm not sure if I can say it was a mistake, so let it be. But even in Isol's mind, what does she see here? Because like everyone that has seen Percy has assumed he's like five. <laughs> at most <laughs> like no one thinks the dude's 16 so you're telling me if a random five-year-old just wasn't paying attention to where they were going and walked into ice old she would have killed them because that's what this would have done like i don't know what like if percy wasn't an actual superhuman he, that, that he'd be dead just like legitimately splattered even if she was just going to crush them as she says that was a, that's a homicide <laughs> Like, what, what, who is she, what is, what is that going to do? Like, how, how are they expected to survive? I don't know. Isol seems kind of on that menace mentality too, but for even less of a reason. Like, at least Kion seems conscious about it. Like, he's like, yeah, I signed up for the bad person club. Isol just seems uncharacteristically mean. I, I don't know why. And Jade, Jade's just stupid. Like, I'm not even going to lie. From what little we've got of Jade, Jade's just an idiot who follows along. And they're some of the most dangerous kind of people if you really think about it. But of course... We see that Isold is like, huh, you think you can run from me forever? And then she tries to detonate a five-year-old. Like, <laughs> I don't get it. I know she's under the assumption that he's one of Arthur's knights now. But even still, logic, like, it's clear that these people just don't think, except for Kion. Like, Kion is essentially being mean. But she's threatening, she's literally destroying the street of Leonis. Destroying the place she's supposed to be protected. Like, are we back in season one? Like, admittedly, the reason I gave people, like, help them i gave people like the new generation i gave all them passes is because they were literally under evil mind control <laughs> like they were under control of a being who would not care less about destroying leonis its street and harming the people if these are legitimate holy knights <laughs> of leonis why is your first instinct to let off your gigantic explosion magic and notably that makes you question gila's kid i don't know because we know Gila kept her explosion magic. Was Gila this tall? I don't think so. I don't think Gila was that tall. And she has the long hair like Gila. But other than that, there are like no resemblances. Other than explosion magic and the long hair, which isn't even the same color. I don't necessarily see any relation between Gila and Isolde. I'm not sure. Hey, my third mythology. But like y'all been educating me so much. Like I'm so glad I have a comment section. Because y'all be just enlightening me on things I don't even know. So thank you for that. But... Yeah, I don't know. The explosion magic plus the hair is the only reason I'm thinking Gila relation, but I don't know who Gila would have got with. I thought she was down for Jericho, but I don't know. Who knows? Of course, we get to see that person's kind of caught off guard that the ground just randomly exploded. And we see that she's so proud of the fact that she's literally destroying the area. And of course, we get to see that, and this is sad, right? Because this means the people of Leonis are used to it. Because they literally like, <gasps> what's the explosion? I felt it. And then they say a holy night battle. So this is a common occurrence. They just be throwing hands in the streets. You, Your guys' job is to protect the kingdom, not destroy it. What's wrong with y'all? Of course, we see Jade being like, oh, great. Look, the exact reason why I didn't want us to fight. Now it's hysteria. And I, Kaihan you still have no guarantee that this is actually a holy night <laughs> like you have no idea who this is why are you going to such extreme lengths to try and kill this man kill him not capture him not interrogate him kill him i don't get it well i get it because you're evil let's see that's the thing i keep correcting myself like why is kion doing this because kion's a bad dude <laughs> simple as that i don't know why i like him so much it's the design and the fact that i like people on menace mentality but i just i here's the thing i'll give kion the pass I give Kai on that new generation slash helper pass. He obviously doesn't care. He's here for the memes and Doritos. Meanwhile, Jade and I sold idiots. <laughs> I just, they, I just, they mm, want to smack him. But of course, we get to see that Kion is, <laughs> he's just, he, he says, that little bugger is tougher than I thought. And it makes, that makes me wonder, are these... Are these, because they call themselves Tristan's Platoon later on in the chapter. So are these people going to be featured in Grudge of Edinburgh? Or is this where we're going to meet them? I, I wonder. And notably, we get to see that this is this creature that Kion is in control of, known as a sylph. And apparently, he has his, Percy has had his voice and breath taken by a sylph. 
and he can still remain conscious. Meaning that, essentially, this creature can deprive you of some of your basic abilities. Like, I get the voice part. No, I get the breath part, right? Because it looks like a wind spirit. But I guess it's absorbing the sound Percy makes, too. That's why he's quote-unquote mute. So, I, I don't really know. And notably, this thing seems to be invisible to everyone else. Because, at least in the earlier panels where we see like a clear above shot of Percy's head, there's no sylph. But when Kion is looking at it, he clearly sees this wind creature. So apparently he has access to beings that are imperceptible by other ones. Because it'll be Percy, who does have some decent magic sensory abilities. Like he sends Fittich right behind him. And obviously this thing is like not even three inches above his head. So apparently this thing is undetectable by magic. Or like maybe, maybe, I don't know. I think it may just be unperceivable by beings that don't know of it. So, that's a pretty powerful ability. Like, I'd say Explosion Ground is not necessarily the most crazy thing. It's essentially just landmine magic. But that's still useful. That can be very, very useful. So, I will admit, so far, the two magics we're seeing are pretty useful. And I'm assuming against any other person who wasn't raised in, like, extreme conditions and or just doesn't, doesn't need to breathe, they would be pretty hampered by the ability to not breathe that well and not be able to speak. Especially any person who relies on, like, enchantments or the need to speak spells, if they actually need to speak them they would be pretty much hard negated by someone like our boy kion which is very useful i can definitely see how he can be he's essentially at least from what i can tell if i were to equate things to our original party members i'd say since this is tristan's platoon i would say that tristan is obviously the percy equivalent i'd say kion is the nazi equivalent both on that menace mentality and also with extremely out there but unique abilities that can be useful in very specific situations and then i'd say probably isold's the hmm i probably the donnie of the group no because i feel like donnie is more so the at least personality wise donnie is more so the shade of the group because he's just he just followed along for the ride. He's there for the memes and Doritos. Meanwhile, I sold the hard-headed, attacking, lack of cognitive thought. Like, no. why? Why write them like this? But, of course, we get to see that I sold declares she's going to smash the blank of, once again, what looks like a five-year-old to pieces. Why? But, of course, we get to see... Percy responds with his magic. He stops coating his weapon with it and actually catches her magic. Meaning that, like, Isol just must be fought her. Like, y'all got, you guys were right. Because while Percy's heavily debuffed, he literally, with his raw magic alone, so he lost the 10 times amp. Because notably, the 10 times amp only applies when it's coating a weapon. So, Isol, who's amping her her weapon with, a, with, which seems to be a destructive type magic, by the way. It's explosion, so it has to be destructive type. On a, thank you, a morning star weapon. Thank you for, I believe that was. I'm going to put your comment up on screen. So whoever told me it wasn't morning star. Thank you. I'm going to put your comment. But we see that she took her morning star, slammed it into Percy's magic while it was enhanced. It likely has a 10 times buff. And Percy just managed to catch it with his raw magic while debuffed. So I'm not sure if, once again, Authors aren't power scalers, so I doubt they're, like, thinking on that high level of detail. But that just goes to show, like, how much insanely more powerful Percy is <laughs> than this squad, even while debuffed. And I love how all of them just have this unique moment of shock of, like, what in the world? <laughs> and we get to see Percy's magic essentially slurps up the magic off the Morningstar of Isolde. And the Sylph, as Kion called it, is like... <laughs> That ain't gonna be me and tips <laughs> and it falls and notably it's one of those constructs that we saw from before and one of those things that we saw floating in the sky that's what drops like the self drops out that like it's like a like you know how when you kill a heart i i always make it everything a kingdom hearts reference i need to play more games i play pokemon but you don't kill like i mean you knock things out but you need pick like essentially you know how in Kingdom Hearts when you slay an enemy and they drop a special item? Bada bing bada boom. The Sylph Heartless just dropped a mithril shard. <laughs> and we get to see that Kion is even shocked that this magic just scared the Sylph away. And notably, I think I'm not sure if what later on in this chapter happens it implies why the Sylph was scared away, or if it was simply the fear of being absorbed. Because notably, you gotta realize like Percy's magic is I, except for Nasians, we haven't seen Nasians per, and Percy's magic in a No, but even then, we have. 
his, or at least we've seen Percy's magic take on the properties of poison applied by Nasians. We haven't necessarily seen any pure magical creatures respond to the presence of Percy's magic. Because essentially, if Percy's magic can absorb the magic of other things and take on the properties of them, any pure magical creature would die if coming in contact with Percy's magic, since it seems inherently a magic killer, a magic absorber. It'll take the properties of your magic, but it'll likely kill you. So it makes sense why the self, what seems like a being of pure magic, would be like, yeah, that's death magic, I gotta go. <laughs> so I guess maybe Percival's magic, while it's currently classified as hope, I think that's what most of the fandom is taking to calling Percy's magic. I think... The reason Percy will be the horseman of death or the knight of the the knight of death in terms of the Four Nights of the Apocalypse is because his magic causes death to all other magics by absorbing them and taking on their properties. Because notably, we get to see that now that the Sylph is gone, Percy can talk and he has normal breathing again, meaning he's back to full power. And notably, now that the bomb magic has been absorbed into Percy's little mini him, it starts following Isold, the origin of the explosion magic, to detonate on her. And she begins to run away, but once again, showing how odd, like, not necessarily odd, like, it makes sense. Percy is a knight of the apocalypse. These guys are admittedly fodder. Like I said, they're the probably slightly stronger equivalent to the group we have right now. Percy's magic, like, she runs away full force, and Percy's magic still easily catches up to her and blows her up, to an even larger degree than I'd say any of her magic does. Like, the expl well, it's, it's kind of around the same scale, but i say it's slightly bigger. Meaning, Percy's magic likely not only takes on the properties of other magic, but enhances it whenever it activates it. Which makes sense, but is also terrifying. Because we saw that all the way back with Talisker when he absorbed the Lightning Bird and just pooped it all back out and then absolutely annihilated the entire mountainside. Of course, we get to see that Isold was taken out and she's crying for Prince Trist. That Honestly, is it weird? I don't feel bad for Isold. She got what she deserved. <laughs> like, legitimately. And I don't feel bad. Like, I hope they all get mopped. <laughs> Seriously. Like, I, I was praying on all their downfall as I read this chapter. And we get to see Percival being like, yo, knock it off already. Like, what the heck did I ever do to you? And I, I think that's great. Because he's, like, literally asking, what did I do wrong? Why are you attacking me? You're destroying your own kingdom. You aren't holy knights. Like, he doesn't say all that. But... That's what's clearly being implied here, because they didn't bother, like, I, part of me gets their philosophy right. Like, at least Jade's philosophy. I still think Kion's being evil for no reason. But, you know, I, I really don't, because none of this scenario lines up for a logical one. What would Arthur's knight be doing running around with something they already stole within your kingdom? If anything, it would make sense if you saw an Arthur's Knight running around with the whole thing, because maybe it's charged and they want to go seal somebody. But this is one piece with a sword fashioned on top of it. Huh? <laughs> like, what, 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 what makes you believe that they would come back with one piece? And of course, we get to see that Percy, as he goes to explain himself, he's like, I'm here in Leonis because the king called for me. That should have been it. Like, I'm not going to lie. The fact that Jade cast this darkness spell on Percy is stupid. The moment he said, I'm here in Leonis because the king called for me, I would have been like, the king said what? Because, and notably, who knows? I guess you could say he's making a bluff, but once again, Percy looks five. What Arthur's knight did, and like I said, Jade's just stupid because he goes on to say, you may have taken out Isolde, but now it's all over for you because while Percy's stuck in Nightland, we see that he, he's like, hey, well, it may be nighttime now, but it's the same for you, isn't it? And we see Jade's magic. Essentially, it blocked out Percy's senses. No, it blocked out mainly just his sight. So Jade's magic, it's kind of useless. <laughs> like, I'm not going to lie. If it's kind of useless against, A, anyone who can absorb magic, which, Percy, all you need to do is, like, activate your magic, and then bada-bing, bada-boom, you're good. And, or, B, someone who actually has decent magic sensory abilities. Like, if you were to cast this on any of the sins, they'd be like, okay. And then they'd sense your magic and then attack you anyway. <laughs> so I guess this is just a testament to show how Percy's battle sense has gotten better. But in terms of, like, mastering his combat ability, it still has a long way to go, which is good. He's only 16. And... We see that Jade's walking towards Percival to execute him, I guess, because he's stupid. And we get to see that Kion is once again encouraging murder. And, of course, Jade, like, he literally goes in to kill him. 
I'm actually shocked that the light, that the Holy Knights of Leotis are this stupid. Like, it, it, and who knows? Let me let, let me try. Hold on, give me a second. Let me try and separate myself from my own logic and knowledge of the situation. Let me put myself in Jade's shoes. Okay, so I'm a Holy Knight of Leotis. I see a kid running from one of my fellow knights, and at that same time, my fellow Holy Knight declares that they must be a knight of Camelot with a piece of the Coffin of Eternal Darkness. I know what the Coffin of Eternal Darkness is myself, and thusly, I know that the whole thing was seized, as my Fortnite friend just said, it was seized by Camelot from us, meaning there's no reason to bring only a piece of it back here. So why would I only bring a piece? And this supposed knight also looks five years old. So my immediate next thought, instead of capturing him and asking him questions, especially when I have a perfect magic used to detain somebody rather than actually kill them, is to just kill them. I can't even like I maybe it's, uh, maybe I'm just mean or maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm over analytical. I'd probably be a bad holy knight, I guess, because my first instinct would be to kill this dude. Because even if like if I literally detained him, like Percy is detained right now like percy does not seem like he's in the ability to fight he's stumbling around i would walk up to him and instead of trying to swing to decapitate him like my man jade goes to do i'd be like hey what'd you say about being the like especially if you got off the king line i'd be like what's our king's name uh, meliotis um what did he bring you here for i'm one of the four knights of the apocalypse like it's i know a lot of things in fiction are caused by lack of communication but like this is lack of communication to the extreme. This is lack of the communication straight to homicide. <laughs> like, there's so many skips here. And of course, we get to see the G, like, I'm so happy they showed up. All right, well, we get to see our barrel come out the clutch out of nowhere too, with like remarkable speed. Like notably Jade was mid swing and the barrel comes out and Jade reacts and jumps back and the barrel bounces. And we get to see that Donnie, Nasi, and, and Percival Nani, Nani, the personal. Nani, Nani, oh my, from Lilo and Stitch, um, but Donnie, Nasi, and, and Anne have all pulled up, and notably, Sin is absent, or Lancelot is absent, Lance, where are you, my guy, <laughs> like, what is going on here, and we, yeah, like, if they could follow the noise here, Lance, why didn't you, <laughs> Well, Lance maybe Lance may have told them to go on ahead without him, and he may have gone to investigate Tristan's return or whatever those lights were. And we get to see. I love how Nasians is the most concerned too. Like he's legit. Like oh, Percival, are you all right? Are you good? And of course, per Percy's so happy to see his friends that he's like, "Wait, you're here? Great! Please come help me. It's dark outside." <laughs> uh, I know. I like Percy. Man, he, he he's still he's still great. He's still great. And of course we see that ice holds back up and they're all ready for murder because wait, like what i don't get it like how do you guys leap to murder so quickly is this is i mean this is the world of seven daily sins and to be fair like murder was the answer a lot of the time <laughs> like there are times where i wish some of the sins would come in but like at the same time you guys have no context of any scenario what makes you think these are knights and like notably we see that this is the confirmation this is Tristan's platoon, meaning that these are likely the people he met in like Edinburgh or whatever. Because it explains why they don't recognize Donnie. Because let's see. That, yeah, Donnie doesn't recognize them. And notably, they don't recognize Donnie. So it's likely that these people aren't natively from Leonis. Because unless I'm mistaken, Donnie only left Leonis about a year ago. I believe it was confirmed his mom died about a year ago. So. Obviously, I mean, I know people can go through growth spurts in a year, but Donnie shouldn't look that much different, and neither should these guys look that much different to a point in one year where they couldn't recognize each other. So these guys are obviously new to Leona, so maybe that's it. Maybe they're just all new Holy Knights and they're all murderous idiots. Because, of course, they, the two come to combat. Meanwhile, not even really. Like, Anne is, like, insulting the name Tristan Platoon because it does sound low-key kind of dumb. But, of course, we get to see Nasi is asking the more important question, like, you guys are holy knights. Why are you doing this? <laughs> like, why are you randomly attacking a civilian? Well, maybe not a civilian, but some dude 
who you just randomly saw? Why are you attacking him with murderous intent? And then on top of that, why are you destroying the area around you? This is very unholy night like you're supposed to protect the kingdom, not destroy it. Shout out to these people actually making good points. And of course, Kion, once again on his murderous energy, is like, okay, so I'll give you a chance to make up for this. Kill them all. And he mutters the word Tifos. And with that, the little stone respawns the self, and it takes away the breath voice from Donnie and Ignacians, and of course, due to that, they all are incapacitated, showing literally what I mentioned earlier, where if you weren't raised in extreme effects, you weren't going to you weren't gonna be able to combat the silk very, very well. And obviously they still can't see it either. And of course, Percy's extremely worried for his homeboy. He's like, wait, what's going on? Because he can't perceive anything. And ISO proceeds to commit to the, like, it is highly likely that these she was ready to explode these people. And we get to see that she literally, she slams her morning star into, not, into Anne's arm to the point that it looks like it breaks her arm and probably cracks a bit of her spine. She slams her morning star so hard in Anasian's stomach that he spits blood and likely also did internal damage and internal bleeding and then proceeded to hit Donnie on the back so hard that it sent him flying and flipped him upside down. And of course, Percy still can't perceive anything, just see, feels Anne drop to him bleeding extremely from multiple crevices and he doesn't get a response from either of his friends who are lying there bloodied on the ground and Isol goes to happily declare, know your place, guards of evil, gang up on us all you want, you'll never defeat the royal holy knights. And Percy, oh, I love this, Percy just staggers. And notably, we get to see Kion, the evil menace, being like, you're the last, what's wrong? Too scared to speak? And, and notably, in a similar language to what our boy Kion used earlier to re-summon the self, it seems to be that Percy mutters, Zalora Hindu. And, like, we know Percy can speak demon language, right? But that, like, the, the text bubble doesn't match, match when Percy speaks demon language. That does, that, I, something deep within me makes me think that wasn't Percy. It was something within Percy that spoke that. And notably... I'm not sure what they react to first, right? Because the Holy Knights seem to have this shuddering reaction. And I'm not sure it's, if it's from Zulula Hindu. Or if it's from the person who says, enough, all of you. And then they get the hearing of, it's you. When did you return? And we get to see Prince Tristan. And yo, I'm not going to lie. Hold on, let me take a sip. Lance, you lost the sauce contest, dog. I hate to say it. I mean, to be fair, I haven't seen all of his fit. I have not seen all of his fit. But if that man actually has some pants on, Lance, you lost the contest, bro. He is, I know 100% why this man knocked one of your native abilities. Into you. <laughs> like, it would be, like, it's going to be sad. But it would be hilarious if all of Lance's, like, fairy abilities got unlocked by him getting the life beaten out of him. Like, he was scarred. He got heart reading. <laughs> Tristan kicks him in the throat. He gets the ability to fly. He gets telekinesis and Tristan breaks his arm. Like, I think that would be hilarious. However, talking on the chapter as a whole, despite how much I complained about the idiot group, unbelievably, the reveal of Father Tristan... No, I can't call him that. Like, he's actually younger than me. He's canonically 16. But, like, Tristan's reveal at the end of the chapter kind of just jump scared me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Like, I should have known when they called him, when they called themselves the Tristan Platoon. But for some reason, like, my ankle still got broken. <laughs> like, seriously. And the thing is, I love already, like, something tells me that these groups are going to have an eternal rivalry because of this. Like, I know for a fact, well, I feel like it in the depths of my heart that even once Percival is like, once they did undo all the magic i feel like tristan is going to heal the group because he does have light magic he should be able to use arc to like heal all the wounds they have i still think percy's gonna be like yo your people didn't ask me any questions they just tried to kill me and they just tried to kill my friends 
I'm gonna have to fight you for that. Like, I, like at least if I was Percival, especially like in that mindset, I have to throw hands. I need all smoke. I need all repayment. I at least need to take the Morning Star and do the exact same thing to all your friends. And I'm doing it upside Kion's head. Like, legitimately, I'm pulling out the Uno Reverse card and I'm hitting you with the Morning Star. Like, you got to go. Like, really? Like, they didn't ask any questions. And I get it because conflict needs to be bored that way. But at the same time, it's just wild to me. Like, it is insane the fact that these guys, these holy knights, like, certified holy knights they got the drip like, like they legitimately have the sauce on them these holy knights are just so willing to commit <laughs> like if i'm percy i'm legitimately bad like and the thing is what i'm assuming is going to happen next chapter is tristan's going to be like hey get that thing off his head what are you guys doing and percy's going to open his eyes and who knows it may not even be percy because i'm once again that zalula in do like as far as I know, Percy's never heard that anywhere before. And it doesn't, like, that speech bubble, you could argue the shakiness of the speech bubble is just, like, Percy may be just spitting out a curse in demon language. Like, he may just actually be expressing anger in demon language and shaking from it. But notably, it's not just the fact that Percy has that twisted speech bubble. But if you look very closely at the panel where Nakaba, he took the full page and he drew Percy saying that word, he's covered in what looks like dark energy. Like, remember how, I'm trying to think of an example, but remember, uh, when, when, essentially the times when like Meliodas was deep in assault mode or when any demon was like delving into a deep amount of their darkness powers their outline would get like covered in this choppy dark magic like it would like the, the darkness would literally soak out of their skin and cause their line work to become like a bit rough and the thing is it seems like that on Percival too but we know his magic doesn't actually respond that way his magic responds with light and we know as was clearly pointed out to me in the past, I, I literally said, hey, Percy's magic seems kind of like chaos magic. And someone literally wrote in the comments, like, <laughs> in per <laughs> pencil, it's like, per it's like, it's like chaos magic. Nakaba, you're just figuring that out now? <laughs> like, like it, they, it, they got me with that. But it would make sense if Percy, when put through, like, because let's think, when is a time Percy got, like, bloodlust angry? Like, even against Ironside, we didn't necessarily get to see, like, bloodlusted, I'm going to kill you now, Percival. We more so got, you killed my grandfather, how dare you? Like, it was righteous anger. Meanwhile, the Percy we see here that's about to, that start to awaken this weird dark aura around him and start speaking in demonic tongue, or who knows, like, I'm not even sure if this is demon tongue. Like, this looks way more complicated than demon tongue. But the thing is, this Percy who starts speaking like that, he literally just felt his one of his closest friends, one of the first people he ever knew, literally collapse against him. He felt blood coming out of them. He didn't get any response from either of his other two friends, and he just heard them hit the ground. And since they can't speak, they can't breathe at all. They're not making any noise. So he just assumed his best friends, literally his only friends, just died because of these people. So I wouldn't be shocked if, like, the mirror side to his magic, like, you know how Chaos is essentially so much light that the Goddess Clan feared him? Well, no, the Goddess Clan revered him in so much darkness that the God that the Demon Clan feared him. Like, that duality, I wouldn't be shocked if what makes Percy that Knight of Death that may have the possibility of destroying the world, like, who knows, maybe the interpretation of the prophecy does go both ways. Like, not only is Percy prophesized to save the world, but if... <laughs> In, in bad timeline ways, he could also destroy it because of the other half of his magic. Like, you, hope is always a two-sided thing. You can have hope and you can have despair. So we could really reasonably go on a path where Percy, in just a moment of sheer, just shock, anger, legitimate despair, goes out and is like, that's it. I'm destroying it all. Like, his friends die. His friends die, or someone he deeply cares for dies in front of him, and he could do nothing about it. Something like this, and he awakes to the despair side of his magic. And who knows? Notably, you could, this this situation could easily resolve right here, right now. Right? Tristan's here. He's going to heal up everybody. He's going to be like, hey, give me a second. And he molly whops his entire crew. I would literally curb Slam Khan right now. No. <laughs> I'm so violent in this, in this review. But I wouldn't curb stomp him. I would just kick him really hard. But the thing is, this could go one of two ways, right? It could be Prince Tristan's here, 
All right. My fault. We see. Uh, tee hee. Ha ha. We didn't mean to actually try and kill you and your group of friends. It was a mistake. Come on now. Let bygones be bygones. Or it could be, hey, die. Like, this is spare side of the magic could literally hijack Percival. It could explain why he, like, he could, it's weird to say he could have multiple personality disorder or something like that. Or he could have, like, a two-sided will or another being living inside of him. But, like, the way he speaks, the a spell that we... Well, who knows? Maybe it's not a spell. Maybe it doesn't do anything. But the way he's speaking in a way that we've never seen Percival speak before, the way that his magic seems to be manifesting, but this time in a dark way instead of a light way, the way that, I don't know, the, the dark dome still ain't off his head, so he's assuming all his friends are dead. I could very easily see Percival snapping into a rage and being fought like he has to be subdued by Tristan himself. Like, Tristan literally needs to step up and be like, whoa, 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 and transcend, like, I know it would be insane, but uh, can you imagine, like, Lance pulls up, right? Like, he went to go see something else, and then he comes back, and he sees Tristan and Percival going at it, and he sees Percival coated in this, like, dark magic. Oh, I, oh, that would be hype! But <laughs> I, I know, I'm getting way too excited over something that may not happen. But I don't know, this chapter it did multiple things right, right? Like, it made me despise this group of idiots, which I think was on purpose. I think Nakaba is, wants me to get annoyed and wants me to get angry with this group because this seems like a group of new knights. This doesn't seem like experienced people. They don't care about preserving the kingdom. They're very rash. They don't have any self-control. Like, even Gilthunder and Hauser, season one, would have more control than this. Like, Hauser didn't even want to really kill Diane. Well, one, because he thought Diane was hot. But two... He still knew the fact that Diane was a whole criminal that was wanted by the king. And was like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let's not destroy the town. Let's not do anything too crazy. And even Gil Thunder was like, yeah, I'll be mean to people, but I'm not actually going to kill anybody. <laughs> like, he didn't. Like, when you think about it, Gil Thunder, outside the savage, he definitely killed those savages. Both of them definitely killed some savages. But outside of that. They weren't on, like, this murderous mentality. Meanwhile, these new knights who have no recognition of Donnie, who they should if they've been in Leonis for any period of time, I'm pretty sure the dude being trained by what is confirmed to be one of the holy knight captains of Leonis would be recognizable to even these people. I don't know, that's just me. If they were there long enough, but at the same time, I wouldn't be shocked if they haven't been here for that long. So he essentially, Nakaba essentially set up the mystery of these idiots and why they're here and why they're like this. And we get multiple new powers introduced. We get the introduction of this explosion magic, which could lead to Gila foreshadowing or speculation. Or even if they're not related, Gila could just straight up be Isolde's master. We get the reveal of self magic, which is a very interesting magic. I wonder if he can summon other selves. I wonder if he has like different stones for different creatures that he can summon and control that all have different properties in effect like i said i see him as the nazians equivalent he could debuff allies well no he could debuff enemies and buff allies if need be depending on specific sylphs we get to see that jade has some sort of disable dis disabling magic but i'd say out of the entire group so far his is essentially the most useless because he can percy can still hear he can probably still smell he can use every sense but sight and any experienced fighter is not going to rely on their sight to fight they're going to rely they're going to rely on their other senses, mainly their magic sensing. So I'd say Jade has the most useless magic. But then again, he seems like the... Um... Now, I have to admit, even with like the foreshadowing and buildup in this chapter, I sold his... <sighs> yeah, she's definitely my least favorite just because of how like... I can't even find the words. But then we do have a clear like power gap established between the two groups like a group of actual low tier i'm still gonna say these are low tier holy knights considering how per easily percy was dealing with them until his friends pulled up and until he got magic domed i will say the it shows the disparity between our ragtag ragamuffin group of a failed holy knight a girl who wants to be a holy knight and a medicine doctor w versus like actual warriors because they do immediately get like wombo comboed so that shows that how far or who could still grow if Nakba wants to keep them in the narrative, which I always think is good. And I think we get very good, like, mystery buildup. I'm still very, like, this whole weird Zalola Hindu. I'm sorry, I have to keep going into that voice whenever I say that. Like, the Zalola Hindu. On top of this weird, dark malice that's coming off of Percy, like, 
It's got me excited. I'm rubbing my hands together all maliciously. Like, I'm excited for that. And obviously Tristan's here. Like, this chapter, even if, like, if the text of the chapter is annoying me, because I think the characters are being way too rash and way too reckless, the subtext of the chapter, all the things that were introduced into it, all the concepts, the many ways this could go, how excited I am for chapter 55, that is what's getting me like... <sighs> and I love the, how the chapter title, once again, fits the chapter perfectly. I don't think Kion's a good guy, because... The chapter is specifically called Trickery, and who's on the forefront of this chapter but our evil-looking dude, Kion. So who knows? Maybe, who knows? Kion could turn out to be the nicest dude. Because remember, remember what we thought Nasians was. I thought Nasians was evil. I thought he was cool. I thought he was dripped out. But I thought Nasians was evil for the longest time. Then again, you look at the same dude who thought he was Zeldris' kid. So who knows? <laughs> I'm not the sharpest spoon in the kitchen shed, and while I can get some things right, I can definitely get a lot of things wrong. So who knows? Maybe Kion is actually the secret nicest dude on the planet, and he's just acting in the interest of Leonis, even though he is doing all the time negative things. So that could be the case. However, trickery, everything the chapter introduces, this still is like a juicy 10 out of 10 chapter to me. Just because of how much is there, and how many ways a chapter could go. Like, it's rare for me to read a chapter of a manga, and then like legitimately, because, well... I'd say monthly manga are better at doing it than other chap other um, types of manga, but like a weekly manga, it's rare for me to read a weekly manga and then be fiending and scratching, like wondering what could happen next. Like I, I'm very just like scratching at my thighs, like where where, where are we going from here? I'm excited to see. I want to know, and I think that's very very good. Shouts to Nakaba for being able to do that because that that's very hard to do. However, <laughs> enough of me praising the chapter, enough of me speculating. Please tell me what you guys think is going to happen next. My bets are. I think there are two main ways that I'm, I'm passing on. Two, two main roads I think we're going down. Either A, Percy is going to have a runoff or like a spar with Tristan. It won't be a spar in his mind, but I feel like Tristan still will be way more powerful than him. So I feel like Percy, we're going to get Percy v. Tristan next match, next chapter. We're going to get that. And or we're going to go down a more peaceful route. I'm banking on the more <laughs> combat route and possibly the awakening of the spare magic since we already have hope magic. But who knows? We can go either way. I'm kind of excited. Please tell me what you guys think in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification bell so you miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, do have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as $1 a month. Any support would be appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is That Guy with a Pencil, writing off.